Okay, that's the internal bladder of the left hand side of the canoe here. The um, inside sort of uh, waterproof lining is sort of perished, but that's quite normal. But the nylon canvas hull is still very strong. But I noticed actually yesterday that uh, in comparison to this side, as you can see, is the right pressure. But yesterday I noticed the um, left hand side was actually going down a bit. So I pumped it up last night and then this morning it has deflated to about, but I imagine that deflating by about a third. So there's definitely something going on. I think it's normally where I've had one of the repairs before, it's been in the seam on the most weakest point of where it's been manufactured and uh, heat welded together. So I'm going to inflate it and uh, trace where the air's escaping from and then uh, hopefully I'm going to be okay because I don't want to be stranded on the island. Okay, this is what's called a Boston valve. It actually unscrews and comes away if you need to replace it. It's got a non-return little flat valve there and of course when the air goes in through my thumb, where my thumb is that side, and then the air pressures back from the bladder, it seals it. So I'm just going to screw that back in. Of course you pump it in there, that's where the air goes in, then of course that seals it. Anyway I'm going to pump it up now, connect that in there and trace the leak. Okay, you can see I've inflated the bladder. Um, odds on, normally, if there's um, anything that's going to give on these bladders, it's normally going to be the seam where it's welded together here. So how do you trace it without having to <laughs> jump in the deep end of the river and try and hold it underneath? Because obviously it's going to float and you're not going to be able to trace the, the leak. So what you do is you get some water. You can see the cup over there, which has got a whole cup full of water with a flannel and you soak the flannel and then you gently, imagine I've got it in my hand just there, you squeeze it, you tilt it on its edge and you let the water run down where the seam is. What was saying about the water channeling down where the seam is, obviously I was to do it on this left hand side here where I'm tapping, I'll just tilt it slightly so it creates a channel for the water then to be carried right the way down the seam until it finds where the leak is and then of course I do it around the other side as well turning that round and sort of one side keeping it tilted so it channels down and then the other way around all failing that if you've got enough water you just trickle the water sort of along the surface or else you get a nice wet cloth and just wipe it over gently until you see bubbles coming up. So if there was a piercing here, and I've never had it so far because I've been careful how I navigate, but uh, if there was a piercing here, say with a, a thorn from some riverside bushes, first thing, don't navigate into them. <laughs> but of course if you do get it down the side, that's how you'll trace it without having to necessarily insert it into the water. If there was multiple piercings and leaks, then you might have to do that. Uh, deflate it about halfway and keep compressing air into one half of the bladder and then just inserting it in the water. But of course that's a much longer job. So it's best to do the shortcuts first because 99% of the time it's gonna be around by the seam unless you know you've actually hit something terra firma and solid to actually burst the, um, the uh, bladder. And lo and behold, I found where the leak was. And that's a previous repair I did on it um, about, oh, just over six months ago, I suppose. And I used a different sort of mending kit and I felt it was a little bit too rigid because there was a little bit of um, reinforcing 
sort of like a thin piece of material that you then glued and then put the patch over but it's sort of dried a bit rigid and I think the rigidity has then created the seal to break a little bit not fully where it totally was so I'm going to clean that up and use my stuff that I've used previously which has never failed on me and that's the original patch that came with it and some rubberized glue which is really universal this stuff um, if I had time I could just wedge a big globule of glue in the hole and that would be enough without the patch but I've got enough time uh, daylight to sort it out so that's repairing or re-repairing a repair um, and that'll be safe to go okay I've delicately taken off the previous repair and I'm now going to wet my finger with my tongue I'll just do that again There you can see it, that's the original fatigue, I'll just wipe that dry and you can see it's right on the join of the thermal bonding and that just happens to be a weak part so really on these in the near four years I've had this particular canoe um, this is the fourth, I think it's the fourth repair no sorry, third repair that I've done on the seams. I've never had to do a repair along the side. As I say, it's down to navigation, being aware, uh, trying to anticipate from the growth, knowing your foliage along the riverbanks and knowing that when you're going to navigate into a bank to moor up, that um, you know it's safe and it's not going to damage the canoe. So the only damage um, that I've had so far is just on the um, thermal bonded seams. So anyway, as I say, I've taken all the previous one off and I'm going to use I'm going to cut a small patch off of this and then sort of have it going in there so it really moulds into the fold. So it's going to be like a triangular shape which I'll cut just along here where my finger's going and then just glue that on with the old reliable rubberized glue. Okay, you can see I've applied some of the adhesive. Um, just leaving it until it goes tacky it's sort of not nearly dry, sort of a tackiness for about 10 minutes and then you can see I've just put over here the patch just there which I'll turn around and it will be obviously the shape of where the adhesive is there's a good idea to actually get the patch put the glue on the patch first lay it on the area that needs to be sealed just for a moment then peel it off and it will give a bit of a sort of a sticky template of where then to put the rest of the glue so there's not too much excess that might get stuck but what I do is if there is any excess I'll just get a little bit of dry uh, dirt after I've put the um, patch on and just get a bit of dry dirt sometimes you can use chalk the same as you would do with a bicycle in a, in a tube so um that will be at least that will get me home anyway so that won't be a problem and it must really be a much better permanent fix than the previous one now I want to place it where the nearest to where the leak is which is just along that seam rather than place it this end first I want to do it on this outer edge and then press it across so that will just marry in there bring it flush press that in with the seam and then start to work it out towards the main body of the bladder so right in that central bit is where the original leak was but I've made this patch bigger so it seals right the way around it a much bigger space taken up by the actual patch and there's the patch in situ see the edge is flush the edge of the patch is flush with the edge of the thermal seam and of course it spreads over there and just pressed it firmly down on the handle of my axe and just worked it away from the hole but give that about two three hours easy and uh, that'll be ready to go